Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to set the Boeing 787-10 up for an automatic landing. Now it's worth noting at this point that this aircraft doesn't have all of the features in place that enable you to do a really, really safe, you know, careful, real-world, super-duper, ultra automatic landing, but that's not going to stop us from going through the process of it anyway. So let's go ahead and get this set up. So right now we're going to be doing the ILS Runway 8 left over into nothing but... No more complicated and good old-fashioned Jackson, Atlanta. Talking about a complicated place. So how do we know we're dealing with an auto landing situation? Well, the first thing we want to look at is down here. This is a Category 3 ILS. That means that with our special aircraft and special air crew, we can allow this aircraft to safely get itself all the way down onto the ground, which is actually really, really terrifying when you do it. You also have these RBRs for the Category 3 A and B, but we're going to go right for the Category 3 C today. So what do we want to know? Uh, first things first is going to be this 9 or 2 degrees. It's going to be very important to us, even though this is runway 8. Don't think about it too hard. We also want to know, of course, how things like what our initial altitudes is going to be 6,000. We want to know roughly when we're actually going to hit the ILS, which is going to be at Shell Intersection. This is going to be at this distance of 7.3 nautical miles. And everything else is just a matter of setting it up inside the actual aircraft itself. So let's go pop over to Microsoft real quick and uh, get the deed going here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get us all set up. So what we're going to do is set our initial altitude here of uh, 6,000 feet. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to press it, Approach and Arrival. I'm going to go ahead and pause everything real quick. We're going to go ahead and select arrivals. We're going to go ahead and pick the one that we want. We're actually going to be using a different one. Oh, eight right. It's not the one we want. We're actually going to pick on this. Remember, this is going to be eight left is going to be the one that we're going to do. So as soon as we do that, uh, everything looks pretty good. I'm going to press execute. Go down to my legs page. I'm just going to double check to make sure we don't have any weirdness here. Uh, trust me, you will. Why would you put that there? Uh, you will run into weirdness from time to time with the default Microsoft stuff. But I'm seeing that we the iPush, which is right about what we're about to smack into. Then we get to Jazz, and then we work our way down. Uh, somewhere in here actually is supposed to be uh, 8 left, correct? See, that makes me a little nervous here because I'm looking up at what they say. That says 8 left. Interesting, because the one that is in the approach plate does not agree with that. So I'm actually going to go down a few pages and just confirm the fact that I haven't made a huge mistake here. But it does not look like I see it. Let's see, we have some ILSs, we have some RNAVs. No, I guess that's going to be the one we're going to end up using. Interesting. Oh, that makes me a little nervous, like I said. Execute, check my legs. Everything should be fine. Like I said, we're starting out push, and now we're going to make our way down Jazz and Bazaar and Shell and all that other stuff. Okay, I do see them on the ILS, the plate there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and unpause here, and we're going to get our plane nice and slowed down. Now we're on auto throttle and auto everything right now. So we're just going to go ahead and back the sucker down to about 210. I'm also going to start a very, very gentle descent. So I'm going to press vertical speed. We'll come down at about a thousand feet per minute and start making our way safely down again. I'm in lateral navigation mode now. So what I'm going to go to is INET RIF. I'm going to go ahead to the approach page. Now you can see everything here. Select like the speed that we're going to be approaching at. Click here to update it. And I can see that ILS 8 left is selected. Uh, now what I'm going to do is pop over to the navigation radio button. I've got this little thing that says ILS 8 left. We have to dial in our frequency. The d frequency is 109.3. If you're wondering where I got that, give me half a second and I'll share it with you. 109.3 has been a pre-selected. If you're wondering where'd you get that from. Let me go ahead and show you that approach plate one more time. There's our 109.3 right at the top. That's exactly the number that we're going to need for this particular purpose. Okay, now that that's set, uh, we're getting ready for our approach. So next what I like to do is I like to set our particular heading so that it matches where we're going to be uh, coming in for a landing, just from kind of a mental perspective, so it makes it a little bit easier to understand exactly what it is we're trying to do. So we know that we're going to be in a heading of 92 degrees here. Uh, if you're wondering where I got that again, if, uh, feel free to take a look at that approach plate, and it makes it a little bit easier to see kind of where that particular number came from. So there's my 92 right there. That's what our final approach is going to be. And you can see as I come in, uh, where that approach is going to come into. All right, now we're going to get to the hard part. We're going to have to be able to do the first part of our approach basically by hand, and then we're going to transition to doing the remainder of the approach completely automatically. And by hand, I don't mean we're going to sit here and drive the thing or anything like that. We're simply going to have to make sure all of our numbers match what we expect to see as we make our way down to the ground. So again, I'm just going to kind of enjoy this part of the flight. I love the heads-up display, except for the fact you have to do this to use it. So um, I really, really wish they'd fix that, because this is a really, really cool piece of machinery when you're doing approaches like this. And you can already see the diamond coming down. So when that diamond starts to do its dance down, what I like to do is pop over here and I'm going to press the APP button. When you press the APP hold, what you're doing is you're telling the airplane, okay, all right, all right, you can go ahead and begin your approach. 
So here's what's going to happen, and this all happens very, very quickly, and especially depending on what version of the airplane you're dealing with and some of the other features. But what's going to happen now is this whole aircraft is going to swing over to Jazz here. It's going to go onto the glide slope, and it's also going to capture the localizer just about at the same time. If one of these triangles does not light up for you on the correct moment, what you're going to have to do is actually fly the first part of the approach by hand. Ah, there's the localizer capture. Perfect timing. Whew, that got close. So we're looking for several things here. We're looking for speed. Loke and glide slope. That means we're correct. We're also going to confirm that I HFW is correct. We're going to make sure the frequency is correct. We're going to make sure the distance is correct. And now the aircraft has begun the process of descending. So at this point, what I like to do is I like to get the aircraft ready for our landing here. So go ahead and pop this sucker over. It's going to be a little bumpy. I'm going to go pop down our landing lights here. Again, I haven't done anything extreme yet. Uh, we'll get to that all in a minute. So we need to confirm a lot of stuff here. We need to confirm that our landing gear is going to be in the correct position. We need to confirm that our speed is correct. You can see we're coming a little fast. I'm actually going to start slowing us down to our approach speed here because we're plenty close enough. We'll do about a 175 should be a pretty good initial speed here. Looks pretty good. We're going to start slowing down. Come over here. We'll go ahead and confirm that speed. We'll go to the approach page. It looks like 146 is going to be our final approach speed. That's fine. Like I said, we've got plenty of room. As you can see, we're 10.7 nautical miles away from where we need to be crashing into the ground here. So I'm not that worried that we're just a little bit quick here. Uh, normally, of course, what we do is we arm these speed brakes, uh, which is a little tricky to do in flight sim. Uh, we could go ahead and set our auto brake if we needed to. We could again go through our quick little checklists. Obviously, we'd want to be telling the good people in the back to make sure the safety belts are fastened and all that other good stuff under the sun because uh, you don't want anybody ricocheting around the inside of the plane when you're doing an approach. Keep in mind, uh, we could have held off on the gear for quite a bit here. Like I said, 10 nautical miles is a pretty long time. But in our particular case, because uh, again, look at how terrible this visibility is, do you really, really, really want to be risking that you forgot something on our way down here? All right, got a distance of 6.4. Let's get down to our official speed. I like to do it at about 5 nautical miles out. I'm going to set 146, and I'm also going to go ahead and start pulling the flaps down. And that's going to be flaps 20. Whole plane's gonna go whoa in just a second as it starts to settle a little bit. Again, I'm not touching anything right now. My autopilot's already been engaged. I haven't had to do anything yet. We're gonna start getting real slow in a second. All right, last couple notches of flaps. That's our flaps 30. Plane's gonna pitch. Again, we're still hands off. There's a lovely runway. I'm not touching anything at this time. I'm just relaxing, enjoying my flight. I don't have to worry about anything until the plane touches the ground. So I'm actually going to pause here. Well, we're not going to pause. But ideally, we'd have slightly worse clouds here. This is actually very, very user-friendly clouds. I'm kind of surprised by that. All right. So the aircraft is going to come over the runway just like that, as you can see right here. Not touching anything. And that is the world's worst automatic landing. So we're going to transition to a conventional landing. As I was mentioning before, because of the way the avionics on this thing are set up, it's not going to have the same level of performance that you would expect an automatic landing to have, even though we followed all the procedures. The key thing is, and I recommend this anyway, is use it to get you close to the ground. Don't have you put it on the ground. Uh, it's not going to do the automatic flaring for you. It's barely going to shut itself off of automatic throttle. You have to really, really take this thing down. But at the very least, you were able to see exactly what we needed to do to get us lined up. You're able to see what we needed to do in order to get us established with the uh, localizer and the glide slope. And you also get to see exactly what came down at the end. Keep in mind, at any point, we could have overridden the autopilot and uh, kind of brought it down the last 50 feet. As a matter of fact, that's what I would recommend doing. I would not let this thing do that because they don't have it quite set up even though we did all of our numbers correctly. But other than that, enjoy. <laughs> 